Well, good morning. Welcome. No my hi my. Welcome to the community webinar today on speed management. So there's a few few rules for uh, this morning's session. Uh, so please be patient and courteous to one another as we use this technology in a public meeting situation. Uh, use the Q&A function if you wish to ask questions uh, and use the chat function if you just wish to make a comment. Once a person has asked a question and is answered by either myself or one of the other panelists, uh, it'll move to the answered tab. Um, and please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available to the public to view on our channels, either Facebook or YouTube. <clears throat> so what is today's agenda or the kaupapa for today? It's an overview of why we need a speed management plan. What is it and what is it not in our draft interim speed management plan? How we've reached our points? What are we consulting on and why are we consulting on it? What is our timeline? How do we provide the feedback? And if there is any questions or discussion time at the end of this, or any questions throughout this process before we have a meeting on it. So before we start, we thought we'd spend a bit of time talking about state highways. Our speed management plan doesn't cover state highways as these are managed by Waka, Kotahi, or what was NZTA. But if you've got feedback on any of these roads, we're more than happy to pass them on to NZTA or Waka Kotahi. And um, also if Waka Kotahi makes its own speed management plan, when it does, uh, we'll let our residents know how you can give feedback. So the state highways in our district are State Highway 2, which goes from Waimata to Mangatarata and includes Tauranga Road, Rosemont Road, Seddon Street, Parry Palm, Karangahaki Gorge, Normanby Road, Belmont Road, Puku Road, Wilson Road, Pekka Pekka Road, Orchard East Road, Orchard West Road and Cross Road. Then we have State Highway 25 from Mangatarata through to Pipiroa and Kopu. It also goes from Waihi to Firatoa and includes the Waihi Whangamata Road. And we've got State Highway 26 in Paro going from Turahia to Maratoto and includes to Araha Road, Ani Road and Thames Road. So why a speed management plan? Well, it's a requirement of the new setting of speed limits rule 2022, which came into force uh, on the 19th of May 2022 as by central government. And council must aim to achieve safe speed limits around schools, a uh, 40% of those by June 2024 and 100% by December 2027. Everyone makes mistakes and how can we assist to reduce the risk and or harm? So you've probably seen the campaign, it takes everyone to get to zero. And that's what we're aiming for is zero road deaths. So speed limits and safety work are just part of this picture. And to assist with that, we've budgeted 35 million in the next 10 years to do road servicing and pavement rehabilitation because we know it's not just about speed limits, but there's um, other things that need to happen to make our roads safe. So uh, the Waikato region, uh, I sit on a regional transport committee and I get these stats uh, every month. Uh, and the Waikato region is one of the worst around New Zealand. So uh, we've had 51 deaths in a year um, and it's equates to about, I think it's something like 670 um, serious injuries. So um, as you can see there, $612 million is the social cost of death and or serious injury. Uh, and there's various reasons to why those accidents occurred, uh, but speed is a resulting factor in what happens after that crash. Some pretty sobering statistics on, on that slide. So why is speed management an issue? Vehicle speed absolutely determines the severity of a crash and there is plenty of research and statistics on this. It's not just deaths, but it's also serious injuries. For every death, there are nine to 16 serious injuries. Societal costs are enormous. For example, accident recovery costs, hospitalization and rehabilitation. But also there's a personal impact on family and society. The inability or restrictions to work or provide for your family, limited future opportunities and reliance on others for support and assistance. And everybody is vulnerable. So what is a speed management plan? Well, it's an opportunity to take a whole of a network approach to make decisions about safety related infrastructure improvements and speed limit changes and do it together. It sets out where we want to target vehicle speeds around schools, our town centres and our high risk areas. And it provides details on a proposed speed limit changes. It also provides details on uh, the infrastructure improvements needed to support either our existing roads or proposed new speed limits. It'll provide us with a 10 year vision and a three year implementation plan, and we'll review it every three years. So how have we developed the plan? During last year, we reviewed existing speed limits 
and recommended safe and appropriate speeds on roads. And it's important to note it's that safe and appropriate that we're looking at. So we've looked at areas outside schools, daycares, kindies, and old aged care facilities, peri-urban, which are the roads coming between the rural and urban and around low density areas, high-risk roads, where there have been two or more fatal crashes in the previous 10 years, high benefit roads, roads with existing customer and council concerns. So they may have come in through submissions to annual and long-term plans or through the service request system. And each road and its environment was considered both as an individual road, but also as part of the whole network. So this is quite a, a technical looking slide and it's how we sort of developed our draft plan. So we've just used a, a road here as an example, Good Road, it's a no exit sealed rural road off Trigg Road North uh, in Waihi. And it's approximately just over two kilometers long and six meters wide uh, with two no exit side roads. So it was identified um, for review as being a, a peri-urban road nature due to its lot sizes and from a customer query regarding, regarding excessive speeds on that road. As this road is a no exit road, this indicates uh, for the compliance that it's, uh, that speed limit is not the issue for this road. There's been no reported caches on this road in the last 10 years. So that's how we've come up with our, um, that's just a, a snapshot of what the formula looks like when we are setting these recommendations. So what are we proposing? Well, Hodaka District Council is proposing the changes to speed limits on 83 sections of our roads and engineering improvements to 39 sections of the road. For the summary of all recommendations for all roads, um, you can go to uh, our We Need to Talk website and look at the Draft Speed Management Plan Volume 2 Summary Table. So this is a view of the map uh, throughout the district. And there, as you can see on the, on the slides there, those are some of the, the speed limit settings that have gone through that process, that matrix, to see what the safe speed is for that area um, in a quick snapshot. So why are we consulting? As we mentioned before, this is our first speed management plan. So we, will, we want to know, are the proposed speed limit changes appropriate in your opinion? And are we heading in the right direction? There are areas which we'll focus on for the next review, which we haven't done this time, and that's rural roads and residential roads. So the submissions are now open. As the Deputy Mayor mentioned, uh, we want to hear from you guys. Uh, so it's not just about what we think. Um, we've put it through a robust technical sort of data analysis, uh, but we want to hear what the, the users of those roads think. So we want to hear back from you guys. So it's open now until the 20th of June. Then on the 13th of July, we'll hear all that feedback. On the 29th of July, we'll consider uh, all that feedback and then deliver the final plan. And then after July 29, the implementation plan will be developed and changes installed subject to the funding availability. So there's a few ways you can have your say. Uh, obviously, you can head to our We Need to Talk webpage. You can email us at info at hauraki-dc.govt.nz, print out the form, pick up a copy from one of our offices or libraries, or just call us uh, and we'll put down those thoughts for you on paper or as we've seen a lot of questions that have got asked, um, provided to us on our Facebook page. And we've had a few questions come in, um, some, some common questions and some common themes uh, from our Facebook post and just walking down the street. So uh, Anne-Marie, what are some of those common questions? Yeah, well, the first one, and this is a very common one, is why don't you just fix the roads instead of reducing the speed limit? Um, and as we've already mentioned, we do spend millions each year resealing and resurfacing the roads and carrying out safety improvements. Smoother roads doesn't mean people aren't going to crash though, and it doesn't mean that when they do, they will survive. It also doesn't reduce the risk to pedestrians around schools. So another common question is, why can't we just install speed cameras in these areas to target those people who are speeding? Well, the ex existing speed limit is not always the appropriate speed limit, as we mentioned before, for the existing environment. This project is about aligning travel speed with the environment to reduce the risk to all road users. The use and deployment of speed cameras is being reviewed and will become part of an overall strategy for improving safety on our roads. I have a question here regarding the Early Childhood Centre on Station Road in Pyra. Why wasn't this limit being suggested as one to be lowered? It's a major road and that there is kids that travel to and from Miller Evans, Miller Avenue School and they cross this road. So due to the distance between Station Road and Miller Avenue School, it was not feasible to extend the proposed speed limit that we have suggested in front of Miller Avenue School all of this distance. So crossing facilities for students will be looked at to make it safer for them to cross those roads. 
and speed limits in the vicinity of child care centres will be reviewed in more detail later on. Thanks, Paul. So one question we've also been asked is, what does infrastructure risk rating mean? This is a rating that is given to all of our roads by Waka Kotahi. It's based on key features that impact our road safety, such as how winding or straight the road is and how wide it is. If there are roadside hazards or if it has busy intersections or lots of traffic, these sorts of factors are considered and combined to give a score, which results in five risk categories, low, low medium, medium, medium high, and high. The risk rating is just one of the things that we've looked at when considering whether to change the speed limits or carry out safety improvements or both. Good. So how do we calculate the mean speed? Well, it's pretty simple, really. <laughs> it's calculated from the actual vehicle speed data that we collect from, um, from GPS units, um, from TomToms, and your cars and built systems. And another short, quick one that we've got here is, uh, my road isn't on the plan. How do I get you to consider the speed limit on this road before the next review? Well, just let us know. Cool. So we've had a live question come in while we're sitting here now. Are changes to road markings, such as painting red outside of schools, part of this proposal? That's exactly the sort of feedback we'd like to hear. And those are things that we would like to put in place um, if in the right area. Uh, you'll notice in the towns that disability or mobility parks have been painted blue in a lot of areas. So this is to help people's awareness so that they know it's something to be looked at. So uh, also painting red outside schools is a good way to make people aware that there's something different in that area. So it can certainly be looked at and we'd like to hear your feedback on areas you think that should happen. Mm, that's awesome. a good, Thanks, good question. So one thing that we've had a lot of feedback on is speed and that speed doesn't cause a crash. In most cases, that's possibly true. However, the speed that the vehicle is traveling in has a direct effect on the severity of the crash as the speed of the vehicle is the difference between a correctable mistake and a fatal error. Higher vehicle speeds also increase the probability of a crash in several ways. By reducing the capacity of a driver vehicle to stop time, by reducing maneuverability is evading a problem, by making it impossible to negotiate curves and corners at speeds which are too high for the friction available, by reducing the driver's field of vision and by causing others to misjudge gaps. We are trying to create an environment that increases the ability of people to survive crashes. And don't forget, it's not necessarily your speed that you're driving, but the speed of a car coming towards you as well. Thanks for that, Amory. So who is making you do this review? Now, this is a question we get all the time about any bylaw that we put in place. Uh, we know it's on the slide and we've talked about why we're doing it, um, but a lot of people will ask the question, why are we wasting time and money doing this when there isn't a real problem? Uh, that's a common question we get. Well, the New Zealand government is requiring all councils to undertake this work as part of their road to zero strategy. And as I said earlier, I sit on a regional transport committee and seeing the amount of deaths that we have in the Waikato, and some of those are in our Hauraki area, uh, it concerns me. Uh, and we want people to be able to go home to their families and their loved ones at the end of every day. So what can we do to improve bad driving habits? Because as we've said, it's not just the speed limits, it's people's bad habits as well. So this is part of it, start the conversation. If you see people driving in a poor way, let them know about it. If they're your friends, have a conversation with them. Um, the more we call out this and make it socially unacceptable, the more likely it is to change people's behavior. And it should be done in a nice way and have an actual conversation, two-way conversation with a couple of people. Thanks, Paul. So those are the common questions we've been asked. So as we said uh, previously, don't hesitate, make contact with us, go to the library, go to any of our offices, fill out a submission form, uh, ask or post on Facebook, ring one of the councillors. Um, we're more than happy to get your feedback put into the plan. And when we're making those decisions, we've got all that information. So we're making the most informed decisions that we possibly can. Uh, thanks for coming on this morning. Uh, and for those that are watching this at a later date, thank you for tuning in and watching this and getting some understanding what the speed management bylaw process is all about. Have a great day. Cheers.